Okay, I think it's that time. Hi, I'm George, and let's make a glass marble. We're gonna use Moretti glass rods, a propane oxygen torch, and the marble we're gonna make today is going to be a an Easter lily. Inside. Let's see if we can look at it from the side. You can see it's sitting on a little table. And then in the back, there's a little scene of flowers. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I need all the little threads and such that I'm going to use to decorate the flower. And I'll make those first. I actually have those made, but I'm going to make one just to show you the process. And because it's super fun. Here is the white that I've used for the petals. Here's the yellow that I'll use for the stamen. I'm going to actually add some pollen to these for this marble. And the stamen. And then here's a little green that I'll use for the petioles and some of the decoration on the back. And then here is a yellow and white cane. Let's see if we can get that in focus. It's hard to say. That we'll use for the little flowers on the back. All right, so let's light it up and get started. And we'll pull our string, our little thread first. And I'm running low on white, so let's do that, because I'm gonna make more of these tomorrow amidst some of my other marbles that are on my list to make. White is a shocky color, so I'm going to flash these rods a little bit, meaning I'm going to wave them through the fire until their temperature rises a little bit. If I just stuck them right in there, it would crack, and I might never start getting our gather on the end. They would just keep cracking off. Very annoying. So now you can see they're starting to melt. White turns clear when it begins to melt. And transparent. So I'm going to get a gather about the size of maybe a half inch across. Maybe not. And then when the glass is hot, I can pull it down to whatever size I want. Uh, for smaller threads, you can get it hotter. Get the feel of what kind of diameter threads you like to use, or some people call them stringers. Uh, you'll often hear me refer to them as that. I'm not exactly sure where that terminology came from, but. I don't particularly care for it, but I use it, so there you go. All right, so I've melted this white. I'm going to pull it down. I want a one millimeter strand. This one's going to get kind of long. The other that I've made. I'm going to let it firm up to become not bendable. I'm going to use the flame and melt off one end. And it's really long, it's like... So, I'm going to grab it close to the middle, melt it off, and then I have a piece. Pretty big. And this one's still pretty long on here. Let's get that one off. Just tidy the ends. I don't want little hooks on them grabbing stuff on my bench. And then See, we have two okay, so plenty to make another couple flowers out of. And it's white rods, we won't need those out of here for now, because they're hot on the end. Alright, to make a flower, most of our marble's clear, so we need a clear gather. Large diameter rods, we have to flash a little bit longer. <laughs> no 
I'm just going to heat the very tip. And it looks like it's hot enough. So now I can just keep adding heat and I'll start getting a gather on the end. Still not standard. That's what I'm used to, so that's unusual. Formatting changes every couple of months for wherever you're recording live to. Different than if you're just recording on your phone or on a camera. And everywhere you record live. Totally different experience. This is the easiest one right here, just using my camera through Facebook. But I mean, there's always, always a balancing act. Things you like, things you don't like. Alright, I got a crack in my rod, and as I continued to enlarge my gather, that crack remelted and became some bubbles, and I was just tweezing those off. That's what that hiss was, and grabbing the bubbles out with the tweezers and quenching them in the fire. Anything that goes in these little water bottles that I have on my bench is just is waste, and there's really not a lot of it. it makes a lot of noise, but it's, uh, for the most part, just tiny bits. Things I keep out of the water are the things that I want to reuse. All right, so our gallery is getting big. I'm just about ready to shape it into a disc and start growing my flower. That will be the beginning of adding the fun parts to this flower marble. So a little bit bigger. I'm going to hold the rod upright and let it drip a little bit onto a marble plate to get to center itself. Then I'm going to push down and I'm going to use this paddle to push down from above around the edge of the, the blob, turning it into a disc. So it's ready to do. Let's do it. Center it, push it down, flatten the edges of what's pushing out from the edge of the rod and that round gather into a disc. Put a little more heat into it. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is draw my flower two-dimensionally as a cross-section of the flower. I'm going to start at the inside of the flower and move towards the outside. So the first thing I want to do is add my little stamen to the middle of the flower. And I use this yellow thread to do that. And there are the little dots, which are going to become the stamen, my two-dimensional cross-section drawing of this flower, which I'll then turn inside out and cause it to bloom. Now that I have the stamen on there, I'm going to put on the petals. And these are going to be lily petals. And so they have to have an exaggerated shape to start with. I want eight petals, 
So I'm going to start with a pattern of four. Which is a nice pattern to get your brain around. So many ways to do petals. There's so many different kinds of flowers to capture, and some of them use several of the methods. Sometimes you discover them by pursuing one technique and then taking it to the extremes and then maybe getting uh, creative and combining those techniques. And I have a little hair that I want to fix here. Petals are done. So you can see better without magnification than on the disc. Now let's start turning this whole disc inside out a little bit. What we'll do is we'll heat it around the edge and we'll take it from being horizontal, tip it up so that this disc starts to cup shape else. That is what I want. As it cups, I'm going to push it flat again. So cup and push. It's going to be, and then this flower is going to be actually different than any other flower that I've ever made because I don't usually show this petal design. So I that started to slump and I pushed it flat, you can still see that it's starting off as triangles. And we're going to cup it and push it one more time, and as we cup and push it, we're taking glass from around the edge and pushing it up. That design that we've made on the end is each time we cup and push it, it's going to contract a little bit. Let's do it one more time. I was trying to get my uh, thumbnail for my... <laughs> I was looking for a good expression to have. <laughs> All right, so you can see this is getting a little bit cup-shaped. I need a little, a little more. I'm going to push it flat. Now, the design has shrunk a little bit. I have a little more room around the edge of the disc to work with. It's time to put in the petioles, which surround the flower. Those little leaves that hug the flower. So I drew them on there. <laughs> and isn't that cool? You can see in down the end of the rod where it looks blue. It's just the, the bulk of the glass that you're looking through. I got sidetracked. Looking down that rod. It's cool, man. <laughs> but I'm melting in the petiole layers that I've just put on there. As I melt them, they're, they're becoming flat with the surface of the disc. Now I'm going to start to cup and push it again. I'm going to let it, before it cups at all, I'm going to just push it flat so that what I just did is now flat on the surface. So the magnification. Now let's cup and push it a couple times and we're going to shrink it down. Then once it's shrunk down, we're going to add the, the table that it's sitting on, the, the bed of grass, or let's see, what is, what are Easter lilies sitting on? Dirt, probably. Uh, I used to do these bouquets of flowers, and I put them in a little flower pot. 
I never kept any of those. I wonder if anyone's still got those kicking around. That would have been from probably 2000 and... I don't even know. <laughs> Between 2005 and 2009. There were long periods of time when I was just doing glass. I wasn't really documenting anything um, camera-wise. You know, you get a camera, a new camera, and you, you're taking photographs like crazy. You know, when there was a lot of weird in-between times when, like, cameras were good and cheap, and then you use them, but they broke all the time, or... Uh, then they wouldn't connect with your computer anymore, and so you ditch them or you'd lose them, and you'd stop doing pictures for a while. It's probably more than you want to know. Anyway, that led to years going by where I didn't take any pictures of what I was doing, and just selling my marbles through the at the studio, or at shows, or down at the farmer's market. So we've cupped and pushed this a couple times so we can see that far. Let's take some heat out. Look at that flower, it's bloomed. A little Easter lily, it's white. See the shape of the petals starting to resolve. Some of the ones that I'm going to work on tomorrow are going to have hints of a different color in the inside of the petal and some hints of uh, another color on the outside of the petal. So the inside of the petal will have the reflection of what color the stamen is. And the outside of the petal will have the green the reflection of the green petiole on the outside. If you look at lilies, this is the way that they look. And we've got some uh, red ones. I think is one of their natural colors. I think if you get white ones like at the florist and you plant them in their yard, they will revert to whatever their natural color is in their natural blooming time, which is not Easter. It's like a month after that. Depending on your soil conditions. And of course your latitude. So, I've cupped and pushed this several times, and our Easter lily has become a flower. I'm going to add some flowers that will be in the background. I'm going to do that with that yellow and white twisted cane that I saw at the beginning of the demo. And what I'm going to do is just add some dots, very tiny ones. It's going to be magnified and look bigger. And I'm going to make a pattern that's not a pattern. Put them where I think they should go. Then I'll change my mind. natural. Can we even see those tops? I think you can. A little bit. Now let's put the background color on there. Let's do purple for this one because why not? It's the demonstration marble. Make it extra weird and cool. Purple's nice. Let's do the inside one color, so when you're looking at the flower, you see one color, you see purple. And then on the outside, let's do another color, light green. And these little flowers will really show in the background. I think it's in an Easter basket or something. So I'll put that glass on there, and I'm going to squish it flat, cover all those little dots that I made. 
Now let's add the color that we'll see on the outside. This will be the color that we'll see on the inside as we're looking at the flower. And on the outside, put the green on there. The skies, the purple, make it a secret. That you can only see if you're looking at the flower head on. But making stuff interesting from all angles, but also maybe having one angle where you're just seeing that one thing, and then everywhere else you're seeing something else. Maybe it's cool, but in a different way. All right, so now you can actually see my two layers. There's my purple layer and my green layer on top of it. It's melting in. And instead of pushing it flat once I'm melting them in, I'm gonna push them into a hemisphere graphite marble mold. And that's gonna wrap that green over that purple. I hope, I may not do it. It's all right if it doesn't quite work out, it's still gonna look good. You know, maybe it looked nice even if it left purple border all the way around. That would be cool. I like to suggest what the design's going to be, but if it decides that it's going to do like something slightly different than what my intention is, I'm okay with that. Because that sometimes gives you ideas for the next one. And look, Barb is here. <laughs> there is my two colors, green on the outside, purple on the inside, my Easter lily. Oh, yay! And here's the finished one. I see Sue starting. <laughs> nice. Hi, Sue! Alright, so now I'm just melting those colors in. But look, you can see the little petioles hugging the flower petals along the back. Petioles? The, those green petals that, s that hug the base of the flower. The ones that you try to bite off when you're a kid. <laughs> Not this kid. No. <laughs> I was always biting flowers apart. I don't know why. It was a rabbit. Can we go? Can we go something. drive to Michigan just so we can hang out with Sue? Yeah. That'd be cool. She lives someplace hoity-toity. We'd be like the dirty. Hi, Wanda. Dirty. I see you too. Dirty peasants that came to visit. She yes, we like, would be. She'd like have to put out a tarp or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, those Pavlicheks are coming over. All their dirty kids. Noisy. Probably have a circus or something. I'm a juggalator. Look at that. Alright, so. Those the petioles? No, this is the design on the outside. And uh, my idea is that it's going to be like a dancing bouquet of flowers. Ah. And so you can see here I've added those stems. And then where all the stems meet, that's where that can be messy because I could get my last attachment point in there. It's still going to look cool. And I'd blur it a little bit so it looks like a impressionist painting. Mm -hmm. So now I can make these little look. Uh, stems look like they have pretty complicated flowers on by taking a twisted cane, melting the end, pushing it on, and then twisting it. And it's like a little blooming flower bud on there, all in one motion. If you don't think it looks like a flower bud, then don't do it that way. But I like it that way. I think I never get tired of that. Okay, I do get tired of that because 
uh, I want to try new stuff every once in a while. But I do come back to this way because I think it looks good because it's a suggestion of a flower, not, and it doesn't, it sort of adds to your focal flower, but it doesn't take focus away. Which I'll is right nice. Back. Okay. If you don't, thanks for dropping in. Because I'll be done in like 10 minutes. Or will I? <laughs> All right, let's look at it. Melted it in. And the stem. Bunch of little flowers. And if it looks ripply, that's okay. It can stay like that for now. What I'm going to do is get a small, tiny, punty handle and pour into the marble just a hair by getting it really hot. I got the marble where I was going to attach it pretty warm too, so just starting to move on the surface um, just so I get a good joint between that stainless steel punty rod or uh, handle so that I can melt off this glass rod in my hand, the larger diameter one, it's like 14 millimeter. Already rod diameters are very approximate. You will never get the same diameter factory ever. <laughs> Part of their charm, their old world charm. They were definitely more consistent uh, when they first started importing to the United States in the 90s. All right, so there's my flower. Oh, well, I've got a little bit too much clear on there. That's going to obscure my flower, so I'm just going to take away clear that I don't want a little bit more to bring that flower up to the surface without distorting it. What you doing? Bear with me. Proof of concept. I think that this will brighten no, the it's marble. Just, it's just washing out. Huh? Image. Maybe. Let's try it. Can you take it away for now? Yeah. I will mess with that. That's a great idea. Because when I, and I've noticed when I've been watching you too, a lot of times you're, it's hard to see it. Yeah. The marble. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking maybe something highly focused. Great idea. Actually, just Yeah, that's a good light. Um, I think that's still like a halogen. Super. Quite old now. Well, that's why I kind of thought it would be uh, disposable. Mine. If it accidentally Lily? melted. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'd, you'd be surprised I hardly melt or catch anything on fire here. I mean, <laughs> just one or two things every day. It's a little bit too yappy there. I'm not paying attention to my marble feel quite as much. Alright. No, that's alright. And it squished a little bit. So I'm going to heat the whole thing up and try to improve the shape of it. This would be a great flower to put a, like a little bee or a bug on. I had a, a band-aid on my thumb. It's preventing me from rolling with this tiny punty. So I had ripped off. I apologize. That was gross. <laughs> Right. 
here is a little more round. I gotta fix it a little bit more. Got a little bit weird. There is a tipping point for mistakes, you know, when you've it's gonna take you so long to fix a problem. If you go extreme, if you start over. I'm saying that just as an aside. This that wasn't too bad of a foible there. Just misshaping that a little bit. There is one more back spherical. Now we're gonna heat it up all the ripples on the surface that were imparted by the graphite marble mold. And then I'm going to have a, a couple seconds to show you guys the flower. And then I'm going to grab my cherry wood marble paddle. There we go. A little Easter lily. I snuck in some orange pollen on, this, on the yellow stamen too, so that is that should look cool tomorrow. That it's uh, something I forgot on the marbles that I was going to do to just do a, a seasonal group of lilies for spring. Usually we have the farmer's market. around Easter and Mother's Day. The best thing to have on my table is earrings, of course, but little flower marbles. Gets people into collecting marbles. I get to make a lot of marbles. I get to sell a lot of marbles. All around a good thing. doesn't seem like, uh, well, I don't want to say anything about the farmer's market this year, but too early to say, except for normally I would have my license in hand already, and I do not. Because, believe it or not, Star Farmer's Market will be four weeks away. Probably the same around where you live. First week or so of April, there's our flower. There it is from the inside. Really? There you can see some flowers in the background underneath it. And here we have a little scene of flowers and buds on the back. One last heat, checking the surface for ripples. I'll give it just a little smooch in the cherry wood panels. And then we're going to detach it from the last last attachment, punty. And this will go these little holes on my cherry wood panel. Just a second or two. Now, I'm going to chill that last connection point with my glass blowing jacks, in this case, barber scissors, tap it off, and tap it off on a surface that is a fire resistant tile, came right off as soon as I touched it with the scissors. I'm going to heat that last connection point so that it becomes smooth so you can't tell there was anything attached there. sort of aggressive with the heat, but gentle with the amount of time that I'm heating that little surface area, because I don't want it to oxidize there. Now I'm going to heat up my marble. 
Oh, you just missed her, Carla. Barb was here. She said she was going to come back, but... That doesn't seem likely. <laughs> Alright, so, heated up these to orange. Let's do it again. And then I'm just going to let them turn dark. And I'm going to pick up my marble. From the heat flame resistant tile. Put me neither, be right back. Alright, so the marble, let me punch these. The marble will stay in the New York. That's a small marble, so it really only needs to stay in there for like an hour. And then uh, if it was an inch or bigger, I would bump it up to two hours at least uh, in there at 960 to 980. Um, and then I would ramp it down over two hours. For this one, it can stay there for an hour, and then I'll ramp it down over an hour and a half. Um, the last uh, portion of turning it off, it retains heat for probably eight hours. That will really slowly cool on its own because the the annealing of them that I have is pretty well insulated. And then tomorrow, I'm going to take it out, take pictures. You know, when I'm, uh, well, almost all the time when I'm making marbles, I'm like, I want to get back in there right away and see how everything turned out. So, like, after I'm done with the cool down, I'm like, hmm, should I go in there? Should I open the door and get it down 10 degrees and then I can be there checking on it? But no, it's better just to let it sit till tomorrow because, uh, you don't want to pick it up and have it be hot and drop it. There goes your nice work. It's a big gouge from the concrete floor. Since we work on the concrete floor with hot glass, you don't want to work on a wooden floor with hot glass because then one mistake could burn down wherever you are. <laughs> so I'm in a, and you can hear, there's ventilation above me. I'm in essentially a big fume hood um, with doors that can be put on or taken off. I have like three doors out right now. Uh, it has my torch in it and it bends out to the outside. So it's drawing air from the shop and pushing it out. Um, and then I have uh, another vent that's over my crucible furnace area and my annealers. Um, if I'm running them at anything above just a, a small batch of marbles or beads that I can fire up. Um, and then I, I have in, in a bonus fan in my mini paint cabinet that I'll roll over here to move additional air out of the area if I have um, some bigger torches going or I'm doing bigger uh, style glass blowing. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see some of that this summer um, if I can get my natural gas uh, burners sorted out and do a big melt. That would be fun. We'll make some weird stuff. It'll be ugly, and we'll throw it all in a bucket, and it'll hiss and make that wonderful noise that shows you that no matter how long you've been doing anything, there's always a lot of new stuff to learn. All right, I'll see you guys next time, and I'll post pictures of our little Lily tomorrow. It'll look very much like this, I'm thinking. <laughs> and I'll probably uh, make a few friends for it. A little, little bouquet buddies. <laughs> Alright, good night.